It is my honor and privilege to be able to introduce today's speaker. Today, it is me. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, stop, guys. Stop it, please. I'm going to cry. Oh, my God. All right, no. Uh, it's awesome. It's always an honor and a privilege to be able to be up here and be able to bring the word this morning. It's also awesome that Pastor Richie's in the house. I know Jonathan was able to mention earlier. Let's give Richie a hand this morning. I do got to say, though, of all weeks you decide to come back, it's when I'm on stage. So no pressure at all or anything. I just have to trash the whole message now and make something else up. No, I'm kidding. But it's awesome, as always, to be up here. If I look a little different as opposed to last time when I was up here or opposed to any other time when I was up here, uh, it's because I am officially a married man now. That's right. That's right. Please. Please. I know. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. That's right. Sorry, ladies. Um, no. <laughs> oh. I'm starting strong today. But yes, I've, uh, we officially got married just a few weeks ago, and we actually just got back from a quick honeymoon trip to Mexico, and it was an awesome time there. And I actually said this a few weeks ago to our youth ministry on Wednesday night. I was like, I've never before in my life had a time where I went, I want to go back to Georgia because it's cooler. I've never said that. I've never said that until I actually went to Mexico and I'm like, we need to go back now. Like, it, it was bad. It was pretty rough. It was fun, don't get, don't get it wrong, but it was definitely super hot in Mexico. And so, it is awesome to be back and it is great that I'm back because I, I just gotta be honest, I'm way too white to have stayed down there any longer. Like, we all know that. We can easily see that. The lights do not help that this morning. But it was definitely way too long <laughs> of me to stay there if I ever wanted to stay there longer than five days. It was way too long of a trip. But we are able to come back. It was definitely awesome. So I, I definitely had a great time the past few weeks just getting used to the married life. And I hope that you guys can relate, that some of us can relate and some of us can laugh and enjoy and just appreciate that part because I gotta be honest, the rest of today's message that I have prepared today, it, it's not gonna be a fun one. Um, I gotta be honest with everyone, I know that sounds extremely depressing right off the bat, but this was probably the first message I ever wrote where it was not fun to write. And allow me to explain. When we got told at the beginning of this month that we had a standalone message that we got to write for the month of November, I almost immediately knew what it was that God wanted me to talk about. Because there has been something that, since the beginning of this year, that God has been putting on my heart, and it has been breaking my heart, and it's just been hurting me, and it's just been continuing to increase as the year has progressed. And I got to be honest, I, I know right off the bat all of us have said, well, yeah, 2020 has honestly stunk for everyone. I don't know anyone who has said 2020 has been my year. I don't know a single person who has said that. But I think a lot of people from a lot of different perspectives and a lot of different backgrounds in life has said 2020 has just been a trashy year. Whether that's because of the pandemic, whether that's because of, because of social or racial injustice, or even because of politics, 2020 has just been a trash year for a lot of people. But for me... The hardest part about this year, and the most heartbreaking part about this year, is that I don't know if anyone else can relate to this or not, but this seemed to be the year for me that I've seen the most friends and family walk away from God that I have in a long time. It, it really has. It, is, it has been a year where I've seen so many friends, so many family, so many close leaders of the church that, that helped build me into who I am today even walk away from God and his word. And this was something I discussed with my family. I, I called them up and I talked to them about it. This was something I discussed with Brittany. This is a conversation we've had. I've talked with this about friends with like Jimmy and Chelsea. I brought this up and I said, it almost seems that every week so far this year, every time I get on Facebook, at least once a week, there is someone new who has fallen away. And it's heartbreaking. And I hate it. And almost every time I read into it, I, I go, why? Like, wh why did you choose to walk away from your relationship with God? Almost every time they explain their reasoning, their reasoning is because they just can't get behind this book. Almost every reason that I see on social media is they go, God is real, but not the God in here. And as a Christian, that pains me, and it hurts to, to see that they have served this God for so long, and then they go, no, that's not the God I want to serve. I want to serve the God I approve of. 
And so I've titled today's message, What is Your Standard? What is your standard? And I want to discuss the importance of the Bible. Because our standard and everything we know about the Christian faith should be from the word of God. That should be our standard. And so just to, just to be clear and just to reiterate, I know that Jesus is the foundation of our salvation. I know that he is the one who made a way for us to get to God, and he's the one who made a path for us to get and achieve salvation with God. But none of us would know that, and none of us would know how to live that out if it were not for the gospel. None of us would. None of us would know how to be in relationship with Jesus, and none of us would know how to achieve salvation if we did not have the word of God. I think the way that I've heard this best put was from a pastor I highly respect. His name is John MacArthur, and he says this. He says, everything we know about Christianity rises and falls on Scripture. And that's so true. Everything we know, everything the church has built up to become today is that way because of Scripture. It is because we have learned what the gospel has said. And my fear is that if we believe in Jesus because the Bible says so, but on the same token, we don't believe something even though the Bible does say so. What's stopping us from not believing the Bible altogether? If your standard is only believing the things in this book that you agree with and the other half you don't, what's stopping us from one day disagreeing with the entire word of God as a whole? And so I want to make one thing very clear before I even dive into the rest of today's message, and I want to say this. I am not at all shaming anyone who has ever questioned or doubted the word of God. Not at all. As a matter of fact, if you say that you are a Christian and you have walked this path and you have gone through this journey of life with God and you haven't doubted the word of God, I don't know if I believe you. Because almost every person in this room who has gone through a journey and gone through a life where they have followed Christ has doubted or questioned this book at some point or another. I can tell you that for me, in my last years of high school and going into my college years, I literally had to sit down for a season of life whenever I had a quiet time and go, God, do I truly believe in you because I actually believe in you or do I believe in you simply because I was born and raised in a Christian household? I remember reading this book and going, God, do I truly believe that this is your divine word that you spoke and interpreted every word in this book for my good, or do I only believe that simply because my parents told me to? And it was through that season of wrestling, and it was through that season of questioning and even doubting and just constant seeking after God that I was able to come to my conclusion and grow into the man that I am today. And I think God wants to do that with all of his children. But I'm definitely not saying by any stretch of the imagination that we should be ashamed if we question or doubt the word of God at some point in our walk because I think that happens with almost everybody. But what I am saying and what I do want to be clear about is I want to warn those who have simply given up on questioning the Bible and we just don't believe in its veracity anymore. I want to warn and, and, and do so in a, in a welcoming and kind way of going, if you say that there is nothing in this book or some things even in this book that you just don't agree with and it's because it is not the God that you serve, I want to warn you about what it is about going against the truth of the Bible. I want to warn you against some of the consequences and things that it says don't go against God's word because his ways are so much higher than our ways and his thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts. And so the goal by the end of today's message is I want those of us who may not believe in the entire truth of the word of God to reconsider and grow in the knowledge of it. And I want those of us who do believe that this is the true full word of God to be encouraged and strengthened by it. And so when I wrote and I was preparing this message, there was one passage that I think almost everyone has heard when it comes to the truth of the Bible that God gave to me. I think there's one passage that I believe he wants me to talk about and one specific chapter that he wants me to dive into and discuss this morning because I think it talks about how great and important the word of God is. And it's out of 2 Timothy chapter 3. And it's, it's, a great, it's a great chapter and a great passage because this is something that has even helped me out in my walk with God when I was questioning the truth and the reliability of the scriptures. And so the first passage I want to share 
is out of 2 Timothy chapter 3, and it's verses 1 through 5, and it says this. It says, but realize this, that in the last days difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips without self-control, brutal haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And here it is, verse 5, holding to a form of godliness, although they have already denied its power. Avoid such men as these. And our culture, and dare I say our world, is now trying to hold to a form of godliness even though they have already denied its power. This is true no matter where you look. You can easily look at Bibles that are being made this day and age. There are literally Bibles being made with certain verses taken out because of the sole fact that people don't want to be offended by the word of God. There are literally Bibles being made to this day where all the verses are still there and there'll be study Bibles that at the bottom have twisted the context of specific passages solely because we want to serve a God that we can understand and we can approve of. And it's sad because we have people choosing for themselves what parts of the Bible they believe are true and what parts of the Bible they believe aren't based solely on their own feelings. And all that we are left with at the end of the day is a God that we can understand, that we have made up, and an idol that is acceptable to this world. But there is good news. At the end of chapter three in 2 Timothy, it says this, verse 14, it says this. It says, you, however, continue in the things that you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And here it is, the part I think a lot of people have heard before. For all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate and equipped for every good work. Praise God that we have access to the very thing that shows us how we can achieve salvation. Praise God. That even when the chapter begins and says that mankind and man in his own ways are stuck and will never find God, that we have God's word that is able to bring us to salvation with Jesus Christ. Because the word of God is not just a book that can lead us to a relationship with Christ. It's the only physical thing that God has given us that can lead us to a relationship with Christ. The Bible was the one physical thing that God chose to pass down from generation to generation to help lead us to the path of salvation. Think about that. God could have used whatever he wanted to continue his word and pass down his word to generation to generation so that we may be able to know him and find him, and he chose to write it down in a book and call it the Bible so that we may have it. And the fact that there are some Christians that treat this word as anything less than a priority is just disheartening. It really is. The fact that there are people out there who call themselves Christ followers, and again, you can struggle and you can misinterpret and you can doubt and you can question the word of God a lot throughout your relationship with God. I am one of those people. But the fact that there are people who can come to the conclusion that I'm a follower of God and the Bible will just never apply to me is just a scary place to be. And so there are two parts and two points from this chapter that I believe God wanted to make known this morning. There are two things that I believe that at some point every Christian needs to agree with and believe in if we claim to be followers of Christ. And those two points are these. Number one, the Bible is 100% true. Whether we can understand it or whether we see it, the word of God is 100% true. And number two, and this may be the harder pill to swallow today, human nature is 100% corrupt. We need to understand both of those points. The word of God is true and human nature is 
corrupt. And until we can accept these two facts, I don't know if we will ever see a decrease in people falling away from truth. Until we can accept these two facts, I don't know if we will ever see a decrease in people who say they do not trust in the word of God. And so those are the two things that I want to dive into this morning with the rest of the time that I have left. So God, we we come before you this morning and we, again, we thank you for who you are and for your word. God, may we never take your word for granted. May we never take your word and misuse it. But God, may your word guide us into the relationship with Christ that you have intended it to be used. God, I thank you for everything that you're going to continue to do in and through this message. I thank you for just what you're going to do even after today. And I just pray that your Holy Spirit would just be opening the eyes and opening the ears and opening the hearts of everyone who needs to hear your word this morning. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, number one, the Bible is 100% True. I want to say right off the bat that I clearly do not have time to answer every question that everyone has about the truth of the Bible. And if I'm being honest with you, that's not even what I wanted to address this morning. But I will gladly talk to you, I'll gladly have a side conversation and tell you why I believe the Bible is true. I'll I'll gladly come up to you and, and talk to you about how I got to that process and how I got to that point today. But if I'm being honest, I think that knowing the truth about the Bible should be something that you're growing between you and God and not just me and you. I think growing and understanding the truth of the Bible should be between you and God and not just me and you. And so my goal is to show you this morning what the Bible says about itself regardless of what you may personally believe. And so like we just got done reading, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 through 17, the last part says, all scripture is inspired by God, profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate and equipped for every good work. We can easily see here that all of the Bible is inspired by God, right off the bat. That is what verse 1 tells us, that all of God's word is inspired by him. And unless you think that God himself can be wrong, which is a completely different message for another time, unless you think that God himself can be wrong, you have to be willing to acknowledge that his word must also be true. Because it doesn't just say that part of scripture is inspired by him, or some pages of the Bible are inspired by him, but all scripture is inspired by God, not just some of it. It's not that we get to choose what parts we take as truth and what parts are not All scripture is inspired by God. And I think a great way to go about this and a great way to understand this and a great way to study this comes out of Acts chapter 17. The story that I'm about to read to you is about Paul and Silas and they're given the mission to go and spread the gospel to all the nations, to spread the gospel to every city that they come across. And they show up in this place and they begin to teach and this is what happens. It says this, Acts chapter 17 verses 10 through 12 says, the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. And when they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. Now these were more noble-minded than those in Thessalonica, for they received the word with great eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed along with a number of prominent Greek women and men. This is a story and a passage I love because of how these people went about interpreting the word of God. Because the same scripture that was used to bring Greeks into a relationship with Jesus is the same scripture that we read today. It's the same thing. The verses and the Bible and the same word of God that they used to bring them into a relationship with Christ is the same book that we read today. And not only did they accept the word as true, but it says they examined it to confirm the word was true. What does it say right in the middle? It says, with great eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. They were eager to find out the truth, but at the same time, they weren't so fast to proclaim it as truth until they held it to the standard of God's word. And what's honestly scary to me is that people and Christians should be examining scriptures daily in order to see if these things are so. 
But instead, we have people examining their feelings to see if things are so, and if the Bible doesn't agree with that, we side with our own thoughts and our own opinions way before we side with the word of God. If the Bible doesn't meet our understanding, if the Bible doesn't meet our standard for reasoning, we do not want to follow and agree with what it says. But that is not the example that Acts chapter 17 is showing us. And so the point I want you to get and the point I want to make and the point of saying that the Bible is 100% true is I want you to understand this. Do not examine the scriptures to see if you agree with them. Examine the scriptures to see if they are true. That is what we need to do. We cannot go through the Bible and go, I agree with that, I don't agree with that. We need to simply examine the scriptures, not to see if we would personally do that if we were God, but we need to examine the scriptures to see if they are true. And that leads us right into our second point with point number two, and that is this. Human nature is 100% corrupt. All right, I know this sounds like a negative saying, I know this sounds like a negative point, but at the same time, I think everyone in this room can look around the world and agree with this statement. Human nature is definitely corrupt. And my goal with this point is not to make all of us hate ourselves, believe it or not. That is not my goal, that is not my point. I don't want everyone to go home feeling disappointed in themselves. But my goal with this point is to get all of us to take an inward look and realize why we need God's word in the first place. We need God's word because we are corrupt. And what's sad is that a majority of the time is we turn away God's word because we are corrupt, when in reality that is the very thing we need because of the fallness of our nature. And so regardless of if we agree with the Bible or not, our own opinion should never be our standard for truth. I think some people need to hear that. Your own opinion should never be your standard for truth. It is a scary place to be, especially when our minds change daily and weekly and yearly to think, how many times does my mind change throughout the course of my lifetime, and yet that is going to be the one thing that I rely on as my source of truth? That is a scary place to be when we think that our minds and our heart are the very things we should follow as a standard of truth besides God's word. 1 Corinthians would back that up in, in chapter 2, verse 14. It says this. It says, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit because they are folly to him. It literally can't be more clear than this. Our own human nature can't accept the ways of God. It doesn't just say human nature doesn't want to. It physically cannot accept the ways of God because of how high and how mighty God is above our own thinking. We cannot reach a point of ever being able to understand God. And if you've never heard that before, let me be the first to tell you, you are not going to be able to understand everything that God does. It is going to be foolishness to us if we think that we can ever achieve that level of understanding. We simply can't understand his ways with our own human knowledge. That's not how it works. We can study the word of God. By no means am I saying that since we can never understand God, just throw away reading the Bible and trying to know him. Our goal should always be to grow in knowledge and understanding of God. But if we ever have that thought process that we think that one day we'll get there, that one day we'll completely understand him in his entirety, that is where we run into some trouble. Isaiah 55 verse 8 backs that up as well. It says this. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. And the point I want to make off this verse and off this passage alone is this. If we measure our obedience to the word of God based on whether or not we agree with it, we won't follow a single command in the Bible. If we tell God we'll follow his word as soon as it makes sense to us and as soon as we say, yep, that is exactly what I would have done, we are not going to follow anything in the Bible because our minds are not like God's. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. And neither are our ways his ways. And what's scary is that people have literally gotten to a place where they would rather disobey God and understand themselves rather than obey God and not understand 
themselves. It's scary to see. It's a scary place to be that people would go, I know this path leads to destruction, but as long as I know what's going to happen and as long as I know why, I'd much rather take that path than go to a path that leads to eternal salvation with God, even though it's a path I don't understand and I'll never understand the reason for it. It's scary, but people have become so reliant on their own human nature and own human understanding. People are beginning to care way more about what they understand and not who they follow. And it just needs to be addressed. We need to care a whole lot more about God, a whole lot more about Jesus Christ and understand that he is the one we're striving to follow. He is the one we're striving to meet and he is the goal of our salvation. It is not our own understanding. And so what I want you to understand about the point about even human nature being corrupt is I want you to walk away with this. And it is if you think that you can follow the word of God and your own opinion at the same time, you are only proving 1 Corinthians right. If you think you can follow God's will and your own opinion at the exact same time, you are only proving that a natural person cannot accept the things of the Spirit. We are only continuing to prove that in our minds and in the Word of God. And so as we begin to close this morning, I want to say if we are to ever hold the Bible in high regard like it should be, we must understand these two points that the Bible makes very clear. We must understand it. We must be able to understand that the word of God is true and that we as humans, as prideful as we are, we must admit that we are corrupt, that we cannot achieve the things that God has called us to do without his word. And so if you've heard this message this morning, and I know it's not been a fun one like I've said, but if you have heard this message and you disagree with even one of these points, I just just wanna challenge you to do something that maybe you haven't done. I want you to simply study the word of God for yourself and not take it from another pastor, don't take it from another friend, don't say you looked up a, a preacher and you saw it on a YouTube video once. Study the word of God between you and him and see what God can show you. Study the word of God. If you've ever doubted either of these two points, whether that you are corrupt or that the word of God is true, study it for yourself and pray about it in your own time with God. Do not just rely on your own opinion. And if you don't struggle with this point, and if you don't struggle with understanding that the word of God is 100% true and you fully believe that, let me say, I wanna challenge you guys as well to, to be praying like let's be praying for our brothers and sisters who may not fully understand why the truth and veracity of this book is so important let's continually be praying and let's continually be reaching out to God and saying God I know they don't understand but at some point neither did I I know it was hard for me to surrender my reasoning and it was hard for me to surrender my understanding but at some point that was hard for me as well so God reach into their lives and change them just like you changed me Because all of us, if we're being honest, would change things about the Word of God and we would change things about the Bible, but that is simply because God is God and we are not. God is God and we are not. So we would all change things, we would all come to a different conclusion. There's definitely so many things in the Bible that I would go, I would have done 100% differently. But again, God's thoughts are higher than my thoughts and His ways are higher than my ways. And so this morning, I just want to pray over those of us in this room, over those of us watching online, I want to pray that God would use his word, that God would use this message, not to just convict hearts to come back to him who are walking away from the word of God, but convict, again, those of us in this room to continue to pray and strengthen our brothers and sisters around us. Amen? Amen. So let, let, let's pray this morning. God, we We again, we thank you for your word. God, that it is something that we would never be able to attain, we'd never be able to interpret if it weren't for you. That God's salvation itself is written in your gospel and I pray that we would never take that for granted. 
God, I pray that you would use your word to pierce every heart in this room, everyone watching online, that you would use your word to bring your children back to you. God, those of us that are struggling to follow you because we just simply don't understand. God, those of us who are struggling to come to know you simply because we disagree with what your word says. God, I pray that you would make yourself known to us. Holy Spirit, that you would open our eyes, open our hearts, and open our ears to truly accept your word for what it is. God, your word says that your Holy Spirit prays on behalf of the things that we don't even know we need prayer for, but you do. And God, right now, I pray that your Holy Spirit would be in this room, that would be with everyone who is watching online, that you would be with your people today, and that you would be praying on behalf of the things that we don't even know we need prayer for, but you do. Holy Spirit, you do. You know exactly what we need prayer for. You know exactly what we are struggling with. And so I pray that you would be in this room and with your people, opening their hearts to your word. And God, I even pray for the brothers and sisters in this room who do accept your word, who do live by it, who do follow it. God, I pray that you would put a burden on our hearts to pray for those who are lost. God, put a burden on our hearts to pray for those of us who have continued to walk away and doubt God's word simply because of what's going on in culture and because of what's going on in our society. God, use us to strengthen our brothers and sisters in Christ. Use us to pray and move your hand so that we may all know your will and fulfill what it is that you have called us to do. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for that even in moments and in messages like these where they might not have been the funnest thing to hear or they might not have been the most enjoyable thing to hear that God, your word is still true and that it can still move our hearts. So God, I thank you for who you are, for all that you've done. I pray that your will be done throughout this room, throughout everyone watching online and that your will ultimately would be done through your word. It's in your name we pray, amen. Thanks for joining us at Avalon Church. Share this message with a friend and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. You can also join us every Sunday live on the Avalon Church Facebook page. If you feel led to give and support our mission of bringing people wherever they are into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, you can do so by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.